Hey guys, it's Mr. Mazzoro again, and today we're going to finish our discussion of plant development and diversity by talking about leaves, the last plant organ we have to talk about. We've already talked about stems, we've already talked about roots, and now we're going to talk about leaves. And we're going to do it in the same way that we've done the other two. We're going to start with the dermal tissue in leaves. What is it? Where is it? What does it do? And then we're going to talk about, in terms of leaves, how leaves actually control what goes into and out of them. We know that CO2 needs to go into them. We know that they need to let oxygen out of them. But how do they kind of control the, that, that letting CO2 in without letting other things in or other things out as they, when, when they're doing that? <laughs> We're also going to talk about the vascular tissue inside of leaves, what it does, and finally, lastly, as always, talk about the ground tissue and its function inside leaves. Dermal tissue and leaves. Again, dermal tissue, always on the outside. And now, regardless of whether you're talking about a woody plant or herbaceous plant, you always have a cuticle, a waxy coating on the very, very outside of the leaf. Think of it literally as a layer of wax or cellophane that wraps the leaf entirely. Now, this is a problem because imagine if I took your head and wrapped it in cellophane, you wouldn't be able to breathe. And as you know, leaves need to breathe. They need to absorb CO2 for photosynthesis. So if they're surrounded with this waxy cellophane coating, how are they sucking in that CO2? Well, on the bottom of the leaf... There are guard cells and stomata, and you can actually see, if you zoom in on the bottom of the leaf, this red waxy layer breaks, and what you have is a hole called a stomata surrounded by guard cells, literally cells that surround that hole. So the dermal tissue inside of a leaf is this cuticle, and then on the bottom of the leaf, occasionally you have these breaks in that waxy coating, guard cells and stomata, little tiny pores that let in gas, specifically carbon dioxide, and let out gas, specifically oxygen. Stomata, again, really aren't tissues. You can call them a tissue. I won't call you on it, but it's just a hole. And that hole allows CO2 to go into the leaf and oxygen to go out. The problem is, again, plants can't control where water goes into or out of them. Specifically, it's always going to go from high concentration to low concentration. And I don't know if you ever bored into any plant ever, but usually there's more water inside of a leaf than on air on the outside. So as long as that hole is open, that stomata is open, yes, yeah, CO2 can come in, O2 can go out, but water can also leave the leaf as well. Now that's okay because that water leaving the leaf will draw more water up from the roots. That's transpiration. But if there's not enough water in the roots, the plant's just going to dry out and die. So to stop that water from leaving, in other words, to stop too much water from leaving the plant, plants surround their stomata, the holes, the pores on the underside of their leaves with guard cells. Literally two cells on either side of this pore that can open and close and open to allow CO2 and oxygen to move in and out or closed to stop that water from moving out. Now, okay, fine. So they open and close their stomata with guard cells, and that's what controls water, oxygen, nutrients, all that from moving in and out of the leaf. But I don't get it. How do they know when to open or when to close their leaf? Well, it has to do with the amount of water inside plants. When plants are really, really high on water, they have plenty of water, they can stand to lose some, number one because they have plenty, and they can use that water for photosynthesis. So they need the gases, the CO2, that they're going to get from the air in order to photosynthesize with. Because every plant cell is so, is, is so full of water, all the plant cells, the guard cells included, are balloon, uh, 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 balloon up with water. And this ballooning action in terms of the guard cells literally opens that stomata. When the stomata is open, photosynthesis can take place because CO2 can come in, oxygen can leave, and water can leave as well, drawing more water up for the roots, transpiration. Eventually, though, there's not going to be a lot of water in the soil anymore. Eventually, though, that plant is going to be low on water, and all of its cells are going to start to shrink and shrivel up. Now, 
that's fine for all plant cells, but specifically when guard cells shrink and shrivel up with all the other cells, that shrinking literally causes them to stick together and close the stomata that they form, close that hole. So when plants are low on water, or when they're wilting, when they're kind of shriveling up in the hot sun, that's when they close their stomata. The guard cells shrivel up and close the stomata in order to retain water inside of it. Yeah, no photosynthesis can happen, but the plant's low on water to begin with. So how do plants know when to open or close the stomata? Well, they don't. But what happens is, as every plant, as every plant cell inflates and deflates with more or less water, the guard cells inflate and deflate and open and close the stomata accordingly. So it's not really knowing, it's just kind of the guard cells are doing the same thing every plant cell is doing, and that happens to be opening and closing these pores that allow photosynthesis to happen. Lastly, and this shouldn't be a big baboon's beaten butt of a surprise to all y'all, but chloris, uh, ground tissue inside leaf cells have lots and lots of chloroplasts. Why? Because leaves photosynthesize and chloroplasts help organelle, uh, is the organelle of photosynthesis. And just like roots, you know, uh, uh, thin cell walls, large vacuoles for absorb and store water and nutrients, just like stems, thick cell walls for um, support for the leaves. Ground tissue inside the leaves does exactly what that organ does. It has lots of chloroplasts to help that leaf photosynthesize. So that's it. The dermal tissue inside the leaf is cuticles, waxy coatings on the outside that provides effect that provides d defense and waterproofing. That waxy coating is broken occasionally, especially on the underside of the leaf, with these holes, pores, called stomatas, that are surrounded by another type of dermal tissue, guard cells. When the plant has plenty of water, all of its cells inflate like water balloons with that water. And when the guard cells, just like every plant cell, inflate, that opens these pores, open these holes, and allows carbon dioxide to move in, oxygen and water to move out. In other words, allow photosynthesis to happen. When all the plant cells are low on water, they all begin to shrivel up up to and including guard cells, which when they shrivel, happen to close those pores, close those stomatas, and stop photosynthesis from happening, which is bad, but they also stop water from leaving the leaf as well and conserve the water, seal the water inside the plant. Vascular tissue inside the leaf, xylem and phloem. Xylem moves water from the roots to the leaves. Phloem moves nutrients from the leaves to the roots or roots to the leaves. Ground tissue inside the leaves. Ground tissue, just like in all the in all the other plant organs inside the leaves, does the function of the organ. What do leaves do? They photosynthesize. What does ground tissue do there in leaves? Must help them photosynthesize. How? Well, the ground tissue has chloroplasts inside of its cells, lots of them, which help that the cells photosynthesize. That's it, guys. That's all the plant diversity and development. We went through what is a plant, talking about the four characteristics that all plant has, uh, the idea that all plants sexually reproduce, all plants are eukaryotic, all plants alternate generations, and all plants are multicellular. Then we started talking, talked a lot about alternations of generations. We talked a little bit about photosynthesis, and we went into the organelles, tissues, and organs of plants, and what each of those tissues, dermal, vascular, and ground tissue, where they are inside of each plant organ, and what specifically they're doing inside each plant organ. How water is moving through a plant, how roots are absorbing nutrients, and in this case, how plants control carbon dioxide, oxygen, water from going into and out of their leaves.